Okay, so having thought a little bit about this Z offset, um, if we put this at zero, um, it's gonna put it right, um, it's gonna mate that to the bottom. So if we think about um, the wheel, I went back and looked at the wheel and from the center of the wheel down to the bottom of the wheel is 1.125. So if we did an offset of 1.125, um, that's gonna take us all the way outside the wheel there. Um, and then we need to subtract off how far up this is and this groove right here to set it back down into it. So this groove was um, was 0.25 and then from the base of there to the center of this hole if you remember it was 0.6 and then we extended the base by 0.25 so we have to subtract off a, another 0.25 that was the extension of this um, bottom face that we did and then from the bottom face up to there was a, a 0.6 so subtract off a 0.6 from that and all of that put together now makes it so that when you look at it this is now tangent to this right here so by tangent I mean that it's um, it's touching at one point like right on the edge of that wheel the other issue that when you um, do this you'll see that that linkage arm actually rubs and goes down into the track See it right there? So I put the opacity at 50% uh, on the track so you could see this. Um, but if you notice, you see it changes color right there. That means that it goes dips underneath the track. So there's a couple of ways that we could fix that. One is we could just change the diameter of the linkage arm right there, that circle. Um, probably not ideal to change that just because you, you don't want to make that too thin. Um, secondly, we could make the groove um, instead of a quarter inch deep, we could make it an eighth inch deep and then that would fit just fine. Um, or the third option is if you think about where the pin is on the wheel, this right here, this was at 0.7 from the center. So if we just move that a little bit to like 0.625, um, so it brings this whole circle up a little bit, um, it should adjust that for us. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to modify wheel one. So I'm going to go back to wheel one and I'm going to go back to that original, that extrusion. So here it is. So here's my circle pattern. And then I did my sketch for my extrusion of that pin. So I'm going to go back to this dimension right here. And where I did 0.7, I'm going to do a 0.625. It's going to bring that in just a little bit right there. And then I'm going to do a finished sketch. And when I do that, um, it should update everything else. And you can now see that it clearly clears um, that space. So you can see right there. We've got clearance on that. It's not going to hit um, at that low point anymore. Now, could we adjust that to, a, to another number? Absolutely. But I think 0.625 is is pretty good. Um, see my wheels right there are tangent, nice with that lower section. I've got clearance between the cow catcher and the track and the base of the uh, train in the track. So this all looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with this um, at this point right now um, in terms of geometry and the way that it's set up in my design. But that's the beautiful thing about doing it in a 3D modeling software. Is you can actually sit down, you can plan it out, you can test and make sure all your dimensions work, and if they don't, you can make your adjustments right here on the fly and see and test and make sure that they work uh, the way you expect them to work. Um, so that's that. Now, how do we get this train to move back and forth? That's um, a great question. So I'm going to make it so that this is no longer grounded and I'm gonna ground this piece of track um, instead. So now this moves um, as a result because it, this is my grounded piece. Um, so now I wanna put in a motion constraint between these two so that when it moves, these wheels rotate. So there's a place that you can put in a motion link um, that 
um, that allows you to kind of look at the joints that you're going to link together. So uh, if I go to joints, one of the joints, um, I want to create a motion link between these two um, objects here. So I'm going to do a motion link between that and that. So see how those rotate now together? So I want, so whenever this one rotates 360 degrees, this one also rotates 360 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to say okay. So now, um, it's really hard to see, but you can see if I pull one, it pulls the other there. That's good. The other motion constraint that I want to do is this one with the rotation. So I'm going to do another motion link. And I'm going to say continue. So I want this with this. And you can see this is crazy flying um, in terms of distance. So this isn't correct. Um, so let's change this to 30. And now we can see, okay, it's backward. So we want it to be going that way. So if we make this a negative, okay, that looks better. But now we actually want to like think about, okay, 360 degrees is gonna go how far on the slider? Well, what is the radius or the diameter? No, it would be the radius of this particular circle of the wheel. So if you remember back to our dimension, it was 1.125 was our radius. So how far is it gonna move in one rotation? Well, it's gonna move 1.125 times 2 times 3.14159, which is pi. So that's how far it's going to move for how many degrees? So that would be a negative 360 degrees for that rotation. Now, I could do a 360 and I can hit reverse, and now that does it for me. And I'm going to say OK. So now, when I move this, look at this. When I move this back in space, it now rotates that arm. How cool is that? Pretty cool, huh? Now let's do another link, motion link. So let's do a motion link between this wheel rotation and this wheel rotation over here. Okay. So now they're going in reverse so we want to reverse that there we go that's looking pretty good right there so now when I move this back see it alternates There's a couple of other things you can do uh, when it goes to its original spot. So if you go back to your original position, you can tell it what angle to start at um, on this, like the original rotation angle. So, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, and then you can also do a drive constraint. So you could do like a drive joints. You can drive this joint here, um, you know, the distance is negative, let's see, plus pi, let's do So 
is 15, and I think I can. I haven't played with this before. Animate model. So if we'd slow that down, seems pretty, pretty neat though. Um, escape gets you out of there. Um, I wonder if there's any animate. Um, oh, you can edit joint limits. Yay! So you can do. Um, this is the, you know, minimum or maximum. Value, so you can do a minimum of uh, fifteen, and a maximum of uh, or a minimum of three. Um, you can change that down a little bit. Hmm. Oh, I think it's because I have to edit that joint. Um, because I ungrounded that one after I made this joint here. So the slider joint, yeah, this is going to cause an issue because I made the track. Um, these are backward. So I now have to kind of edit this joint um, instead. So again, that's what you'd have to do is go in. Um, delete that joint and then re uh, reconfigure that joint. So really, um, you need to do this unground the way before, uh, but that's okay. Um, I'll just go into this joint. Let's see if I can just edit this joint, and let's do um, deselect both of these. So yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I can. I think I actually have to I have to delete. Let's see this one. No, that's not good. So yeah, I'd have to I'd have to look at that a little bit more. But this honestly is pretty darn good. Um, you know, for us to to do that, you could probably even create this as a drive. Um, you could drive this joint here um, and and rotate it. something like this and animate that model it's pretty good pretty cool um, so yeah that's uh, that's animating and showing your constraints and joints and all that stuff um, for this so if you wanted to you can turn this opacity back to 100% and there you have it there's your train let's talk about your um, car that's going to go on this. A couple things to keep in mind. Number one is that your train car should probably be two inches wide. I would have the similar uh, wheel um, thickness, I think they're quarter inch thick on that. Um, I would have a similar offset. So I think we did, you know, 20 thousandths for our offset for these from your, from the body that you're going to be using of your the car 
And then the other thing that you want to keep in mind is the magnet. Um, in magnet peg, like this should all be the same. So your hitch magnet and hitch peg should be the same on this and in your, your model that you create um, because you're going to attach those two together um, on the back of this. So you, you definitely want that to be the same. Um, and then how far is that going to be above the lower part of your wheel there? So really the center of that hole should be the same distance above the ground um, that this one is. So let's do that calculation real quick. Let's figure out what that is from this point here to the mid center point of that. So I wonder if we can inspect, say from there, if it's going to let us grab the center of that or not. Um, does it give us the vertical? So center Y position. I wonder if it's going to give us that vertical or not. Um, so I don't think it will. So let's just kind of think about it. So if I go from this point right here to the mid right there, we said that that was 1.125 from the base of our wheel to the midpoint of our wheel. We know that the midpoint of the wheel originally was 0.6 above where this original bottom was. So we're going to say that if we drop down 0.6 from that, it gets us to the original bottom of our vehicle. And then the center point of that hitch magnet on the back of our um, train body. So that's what I'm going to look at now. So I'm going to go into the train body and find that final hole. So it's not that one. There it is right there. So it came from this sketch. So I'm going to double click on this sketch and look and it's 0.375 up from the, the original base. Okay? So if I went up 1.125, went down 0.6, and then back up 0.375, how far am I off the ground or the, um, the track? So I'm going to finish this. So I want to know how far off of that, um, that little groove am I. So let's just make a generic part just for fun. New component. So this I would do in another file. Um, I would make a new train car in another file and then I'd import it in if I were doing it. But for, for just kicks here, I'm, I'm doing this um, just to show some dimension here. So I'm gonna continue. Again, this is kind of maddening, but actually this isn't bad because I could project some of this stuff and get that dimension right in there. But Let's just pretend. So let's make this our train car. Um, just for fun. And then I'm just gonna make some generic wheels here. So the dimension of this will be 0.25. Dimension of this will be two inches. Dimension of this wheel will be 0.25. And then the height of this is going to be 0.5. Let's just say that's a 0.5. Um, and that will be equals. Make this equal to this. And I'm going to make these two points coincident. There's my wheels, there's this. Um, now I want to put my hitch um, magnet on there, but I'm going to finish the sketch. Sorry, I turned all this off. Or almost all of it. To extrude these three pieces.
Okay, there we go. There's our train car. Generic train car. Um, fill it. Let's fill it these two so we make it actually look like wheels. Wait, one, two, five. And now we're going to put our hitch magnet um, hole on this. So I'm going to create a hole. This is kind of our critical piece right here. How high does this need to be? So we actually I actually don't delete this. I do it from this time real quick. So this would be this is to the center of this. So um, yeah, so I've got 1.125 minus 0 0.6 plus 0.375, and then I have to subtract out to this, which would be um, an eighth, so minus 0.125. And that gives me my distance, which is basically 0 0.9, I believe. Yeah, adding 0.125, that looks like 0.9 above the um, the um, the part there. So if I do a hole, let's do a 0.25 inch hole. That's 0.5 inch deep. And now let's look at the previous train. And let's do some alignment of this. So we want this to basically attach to that hitch magnet right there, that uh, spot. So let's do that. So let's do a joint. So save and continue. And we want this face. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to select that. And then we're going to go to this guy. Go to the midpoint. And now we're just going to bring it off just a little bit. bring back some of the other pieces on the track. Oops. And let's take a look. So those are lined up now. Our, this in the slot that it should be in where it should be at. So let's look at the opacity of this. So we'll go track one. Opacity percent. And let's see if we were on the money. That's perfect. So down in that groove, so from the lowest point of my wheel to the midpoint of that, where that pin should go, that should be um, 0.9 inches from there to there. So that's really what you have to kind of design around, is make sure that your train car um, has that. Again, you should have, you know, four to six components at least. Um, on your on your train car and put an assembly together and then you can import that assembly into this but that's what the next video will show but I just wanted to show you how you can use this to get that dimension so that you have that spot on so thanks for watching have a great rest of the day